Hello, kia ora, g'day, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Australia only forecast. For the next seven days and all eyes are on the Coral Sea, severe tropical cyclone Alfred category three when we recorded this. Now the tracking over the next few days is pretty straightforward. Most computer modeling in agreement, it is heading southwards in the middle of the Coral Sea. A few more days beyond that, it gets a lot more complicated. Why? Because of this massive high pressure zone out over the Tasman Sea. If that wasn't there, that high wasn't there, then the Coriolis effect would kick in. That's the Earth's spin and the natural forces that wants to pull tropical cyclones like this one in the Coral Sea southeastwards towards the South Pole, caught up in that westerly spin, usually tracking over the top of New Zealand. But because of the high, that complicates things. So as Cyclone Alfred moves southwards, it gets caught up in this big southeasterly flow and the high pressure zone. That can do one of three things. It can stall the cyclone, keep it out here at sea, just doing what it's doing for days on end, or it can weaken Alfred. It can sort of rip it apart and help it fall apart, or it can gently nudge it further towards Australia, a little bit like a spinning top on a table and someone's trying to blow air across it to help move it. So this storm is complicated once it gets further southwards, all due to that high pressure zone. So let's have a look at the forecast for Alfred over the next few days ahead, very similar to the Bureau of Meteorology tracking out at sea, basically moving southwards. It might be a little more southeast or southwest, but mostly moving southwards over the next three or four days ahead. But it's in this zone down here between Brisbane and Noumea, that's where the forecast gets a lot more complicated because very small changes in that high pressure zone further south can have really big consequences to the tracking. Very simple analogy, I gave this to a radio station in Australia uh, yesterday, was that if you flew from Brisbane to Los Angeles and you had your heading just a few degrees out, you could land in a different country over all that time, just slightly moving off the track. Same thing happens with computer modeling. Uh, some of the ingredients you put into it, whether it's the American modeling or the Australian or the European, they're all very similar, but slightly different ingredients going in. And that can mean that over five, six, seven, eight days, the forecast maps can look quite different. And that's because of this big high pressure zone in the Tasman. Here on Friday, there is not much to talk about. We've got a few downpours and thunderstorms north of Sydney, a couple of other isolated thunderstorms or showers around Western Australia, not much, I gotta say. That is a pretty dry map. Perhaps the most of the showers up here around the far north of Queensland, the top end, and also around uh, Western Australia. Going into the weekend, not a great deal of change either. Uh, plenty of that heat in Central Australia, obviously normal for this time of the year, getting into the low 40 degree mark. Some of that heat pushing out into New South Wales and pushing southwards around Western Australia and South Australia. The cyclone's still offshore, posing no real weather threat to land at this stage. But, you know, like I say, the high pressure zone of the Tasman can alter the path the more days we get out here. So let's go to Sunday. That's where things start to get a little more interesting as far as Cyclone Alfred is concerned. Now we've got two different maps here. The one that's not moving, that is the American modeling, GFS. The one that is moving, animated wind there, that is the European modeling. So they are very aligned. The European modeling, just a little bit further out to sea. That slight difference, can actually have quite a big difference to your weather forecast. So that's why this isn't locked in for areas south of Mackay down to Brisbane. Those areas are all at risk, but really anywhere from uh, Mackay all the way down to even the coastal parts of New South Wales should be monitoring this closely, as should Lord Howe Island and Norfolk Island and even New Zealanders to some degree. But for now, this forecast isn't too dramatic, just some thunderstorms around Sydney, mostly north of Sydney up around the hills, a few isolated thunderstorms out in the outback, and a few more out around Western Australia, perhaps around Kalgoorlie. Otherwise, that's quite a dry forecast, just the usual showers over on the western side of Tassie. So next week, this is where it does get a little bit more interesting, or confusing or frustrating, depending on how you look at it. So the American modeling shows the cyclone basically where it was, the European modeling just slightly further to the east. Now that is a big difference, even though globally that's remarkably close for the modeling. But uh, as far as distance and locally is concerned, the, if, if the European modeling is correct and it's further out to sea, that makes a big difference for Australia. So that uncertainty means you need to keep up to date with those Bureau of Meteorology forecasts and tracking as it moves on uh, southwards and gets caught up in that big easterly flow which stretches all the way back out here to the Pacific Islands, pushing down towards New South Wales. So we have to wait and see as to whether or not that rain will be pushing in along with it 
There's certainly going to be some windy weather coming through here, high pressure over Tasmania, low pressure up around the Coral Sea, that makes for a squash zone in between. So you'll be feeling those easterlies, northeasterlies blowing through, and obviously they'll be quite dry once you get further inland. Now next week, these, these maps are getting kind of messier as we go through. I wouldn't take it as seriously just yet because this could still change. Uh, you can see here, American modeling places it out east of Brisbane. European modeling has it remarkably similar, similar but further out more towards Norfolk Island. So that's, uh, and both of those models could be right in, in the sense that it could sort of drift down one way and then start to move back the other. It could sort of zigzag as it comes down. So some people say, why don't you just use one computer model? That's like trusting one sports team to win for the rest of time. Uh, and so we're up against the two of the globe's best computer modeling here trying to work out where it might go and that's why I'm, I'm doing this mostly because so many people are interested in it but normally we wouldn't be giving you this much detail this far out because we just don't know yet how much of that rain is going to be impacting areas in the east but you can see that is very very close elsewhere a few thunderstorms uh, around the far north Queensland around the Kimberley and also uh, perhaps a few other thunderstorms forming through inland parts right across western Australia Kinds of, uh, kind of fades away next week because there's quite a big easterly flow on Wednesday across Australia. Regardless of what's happening with the cyclone, that easterly flow is looking quite likely. That will push temperatures up. For those of you on the coastal side of Western Australia, makes it dry and windy all the way from Melbourne to Adelaide, everyone in between, and further out across South Australia. Down around Tasmania, not a lot of action down there at the moment. You're closer to these high pressure zones. And Look, if these models are accurate, if the American one is accurate, then that's a lot more serious for this eastern side of Australia. European modeling here suggests it may be more of a threat to Norfolk Island. So that's why we can't lock in next week. But I gotta say, the final map here shows you why a lot of people are talking about this. You're seeing these models online, so we can't ignore it. And you can see the American modeling, and it's very similar to the Australian modeling, shows the cyclone hugging the Aussie coastline. So look, this is definitely not locked in. The control, the tracking of that storm is totally uh, about these high pressure zones further to the south, ballooning up. If they shrink a bit, the cyclone can drop further southwards. If the highs expand, it can push the cyclone northwards or move it left or right. So there's still a lot of moving parts to lock it all in. I've got this map here, seven day departure from normal. This actually shows you quite clearly the American tracking of that cyclone. And like I say, the European one slightly further offshore. So for now, that isn't as problematic as it was when we updated you yesterday, but that could still swing back a wee bit in the days ahead. So uh, that's just the, the nature of it. And a big portion of Australia certainly continuing. And unfortunately, some of the more populated areas around New South Wales and Victoria and South Australia not getting as much rain relief as some of your friends might do over in Western Australia, although very dry there in the southwest. All right, before I go today, the flights in place of the day, Elliot. Uh, out here in the Northern Territory, basically between Darwin and Alice Springs on the Stewart Highway. Uh, population, just 287 people. I often see Elliot on the weather maps. It's one of those random sort of smaller place names that really jumps out on the, on the maps. We can't control the place names for everyone who keeps asking, why does it show that? Uh, so, beautiful little spot. Not a lot going on weather-wise. Pretty hot, 38 to 41 degrees consistently over the next week ahead. Check out those overnight lows and chances of rain, at this stage, there are, it's looking very, very dry in Elliot in the Northern Territory of Australia. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow Friday with a special update just on Cyclone Alfred. Uh, hopefully we can make a little more sense of where it's going to be going as we head into next week. Have yourselves a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.